Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm a PhD student on the Manchester Collaboration of Urban Health. Um, my study is split into two parts. The first is looking at the usability of the Euro EuroEarthis2 data collection tools um, in a global setting. For this study, it's Vietnam. And the second part is investigating um, the access accessibility of um, existing data sources for NGOs. So um, a lot of data is available online um, and I created an online survey um, for NGOs and this was posted across um, networks in Southeast Asia and the Asia Pacific region. Um, from this data, um, I've been able to analyse it. What I found is that NGOs find existing sources of information difficult to understand. The data is often out of date and it's not very user friendly. NGOs play an important part in the developing world, often taking the place of governments. Um, they help to implement um, health programmes, such as vaccination programmes, especially when resources are limited. Um, they often provide training for um, local health professionals um, and healthcare providers, um, and they often undertake work for other organisations, such as the WHO, United Nations and UNICEF. As urban, urban areas continue to expand within the developing world, theoretically, this is where improving health will have the greatest impact. Therefore, urban health studies are important if health inequalities within cities in the developing world are to be addressed. So my name is James Higginson and I'm part of the Manchester Urban Collaboration on Health. Um, my research is looking at alcohol consumption in urban areas and health related consequences. And it's also designed to tie that in with the strength of alcohol policy in each urban area. Uh, the reason why it's important to be looking at, at cities and alcohol is because traditionally cities have uh, big drinking centres, uh, the place where a lot of alcohol related violence takes place uh, and also there are other social factors such as deprivation which are also very influential in alcohol consumption. So to be able to collect data at the urban level uh, and hopefully then relate it to policymakers in urban areas, it means that they're getting information that's specifically relevant to their populations whereas a lot of the methodology that I'm using has only really been done at the national level so far. Um, so the process that I'm going through at the moment is uh, calculating something called a disability adjusted life year and what that does is it, um, it combines data on mortality and morbidity within populations that is attributable to alcohol and creates a time-based figure for how much healthy life is lost through early death and also living life with, uh, you know, uh, with disability. Um, so by calculating these using urban area specific data, uh, I can then also look at the strength of policy in each, um, in each urban area to find out whether a harm related to alcohol and health, or should I say health harms related to alcohol in urban areas are directly related to the strength of policy, um, which is still a case that I might find out towards the end that actually it's the other way around and, and it's the health situation that influences policy rather than policy influencing health. But, that's what, what I'm coming up to now. My name is Will Morton and I'm studying part-time for a PhD in Epidemiology and Health Sciences. My PhD research is based on hepatitis C testing. I'm using two studies um, through my PhD, one of which is a cluster randomised control trial looking at the uh, knowledge of hepatitis C in general practitioners and how changing knowledge can affect testing. And the second study uses data linkage using uh, virology laboratory databases to determine the total volume of testing in Greater Manchester over the last 10 years to look at trends in testing, trends in positivity rates and also we'll be using the results to evaluate the effectiveness of the national surveillance system for hepatitis C infections. I'm Angela Pilkington and uh, my PhD research is on inequalities in cervical cancer prevention. Um, the introduction of the cervical screening programme um, resulted in a, a significant decrease in cervical cancer mortality, but uptake has declined in recent years. Um, the introduction of the HPV vaccination programme, um, it's hoped that this programme could um, protect girls who in future might not attend for cervical screening but also could stimulate attendance in um, the mothers of those girls attending for screening. So my research is um, two studies. The first part I'm um, con combining mothers' cervical screening records 
with their daughter's HPV vaccination um, date, um, records to, um, to look at whether the similar socio-demographic factors are associated with uptake of both programmes, but also to look at the interaction between a mother's screening attendance and their daughter's vaccination uptake. I'm also um, doing a separate study, uh, which is more qualitative work, which will incorporate um, a survey um, conducted in uh, two PCTs in the North West um, and some interviews with, um, with women whose daughters have uh, recently attended for screening um, for vaccination. Um, and through this, it's helped to look at um, some of the factors associated with um, a woman's or mother's uh, attendance for screening and whether the vaccination programme has influenced their future screening intentions.